What's up guys? Welcome to Foundflix and another edition of Ending Explained. This time I'll be looking at the eerie and atmospheric Black Coat's daughter. Interestingly, the film is written and directed by Osgood Perkins, son of Anthony Perkins, the original Norman Bates himself. Now, if you have any other movies or TV shows you'd like to see me explain, I'm always interested in suggestions. So make sure to hit me up on social media at Foundflix with any requests. The Black Coat's daughter's focus is on Catherine and Rose, two students at a religious boarding school called Bramford. But there's also another woman Joan that is on her own independent journey heading to Bramford for reasons unknown. The connection between Joan and the rest of the story isn't clear until we see some specific clues throughout her scenes that reveal to us her true identity. And it's her identity that helps explain what the ending is all about. But before we get to any of that, let's look at Catherine and Rose, two very different girls that find themselves drawn closer over a bleak winter break. Each has an excuse for why their parents can't pick them up for the holidays, but it seems that Catherine is lying, or at least avoiding the truth. Based on the opening scene, A Dream of Catherine's, we see her standing with her father and revealing a destroyed car, and then she calls out to her mother. It appears that Catherine is haunted by the real event of a car wreck that occurred resulting in the death of her mother and more than likely father as well. Catherine is seen as very cold and distant throughout the film and more than a little bit socially awkward. Meanwhile, Rose is by far more freewheeling, disobeying the father's orders to look after Catherine and instead hanging out with her baby daddy. However, there's a lot more going on at Bramford than teen drama, and it appears that there is a mysterious evil force suddenly unleashed upon the school. We get some history to the evil at the school when Rose tells Catherine about two sisters at the school who were found a few years ago in the basement worshiping Satan. We don't know the end result of the sisters worshiping, but I believe that it was their initial calling out to Satan that brought the evil force to the school in the first place. And it appears this same evil force has reappeared and is now attempting to influence Catherine to the dark side, taking advantage of her naivete and lonely nature. It all starts with a phone call which Catherine answers, but the story cuts away for now and we don't hear or see what happens. But later, the movie cuts back to this period of time, showing us some of the same events we've already seen, but now from Catherine's perspective. When she answers the phone, Catherine thinks it might be her parents, but she is greeted by a distorted, garbled voice that says some pretty messed up stuff. Geez, Satan, that's just rude. And from the time of this very first call, Catherine becomes increasingly influenced by the evil force. We at one point see a ghostly shadow lingering over Cat in the bathtub, and this is our only real look at what the spirit possessing her looks like. All of these moments are again re-experiencing scenes from earlier, but this time confirming to us that she has been under the control of evil. Like I said, we don't see these scenes until later in the movie, about an hour or so. So back to the story as told linearly in the movie, where we don't know what the deal is with Catherine as of yet. The movie continues with a slow burn as we learn more about the truth about what's going on with Catherine. Our first indicator comes when Rose is in the bathroom hearing a muffled voice through the radiator, a female which says, sounds good. Rose follows the voice and other creepy noises into the basement of the school, coming across a boiler room and we see the boiler glowing red with Catherine bowing in praise repeatedly to the flame, clearly representing Satan. More events occur as Catherine becomes further possessed by the force of evil, seeing things like her convulsing in bed, then back bending into quite painful looking positions, later throwing up a weird milky substance, and most indicatively, violently murdering the two sisters. Unfortunately, Rose is also killed by Catherine in quite a brutal end for her, as she is pregnant as well. As I mentioned, the film jumps around in time at one point, reframing events seen earlier. But chronologically, things end with Catherine removing the heads of Rose and the two sisters, bringing them into the furnace in tribute to Satan. Obviously, she's become completely consumed by Satan, but she believes that what she is doing is right, saying to the officer that discovers her that she is saving them. The officer shoots her in the shoulder and takes her down. Later, Catherine wakes up in a hospital to Father Gordon standing over her, who confronts the demon that possesses her via an exorcism. Father Gordon splashes holy water on Cat, telling the spirit to leave this place. Cat lifts into the air, hovering over the bed. Then we see the demon that had possessed her once again in a dark visage on the curtain. And it appears that Catherine did not want the demon to go out of her, asking it not to leave. But despite her plea, it disappears, gone from her for good. This isn't the end of Catherine's story, however. The movie cuts to the Jones storyline at various points throughout the movie, but these scenes aren't taking place at the same time as what we've seen with Catherine and Rose, and the entire Joan plot takes place nine years after the events at the school. And the mysterious Joan isn't actually Joan at all, but is in fact Catherine, now played by Emma Roberts. It's maybe hard to make the physical connection 
between the two actresses, but there are other parts of the movie that confirm this connection. Joan slash Catherine has flashes early on, and we quickly see the officer firing in the basement that was seen with Catherine. And we see Joan has a bullet wound scar in the same spot. And Joan is actually someone else's identity that Catherine took. She attacks someone with the name Joan, and we see their ID card with that name on it. So we definitely know she is not actually Joan. She's really Catherine who has recently escaped from the mental hospital when we pick up with her story in the film. She's no doubt been housed there the past nine years after Father Gordon excised the evil from her. Since we know Catherine slash Joan didn't want to be without the demon inside her, that was her motivation for escaping the hospital. She's heading back to Bramford in an attempt to bring back the same spirit that possessed her. Ironically, the people that she happens to run into that offer a ride to the school are Rose's parents, and we see that Catherine can't help but laugh when Rose's father Bill shows her a picture of Rose. To Catherine, this must be more than a coincidence and feel like an important sign that she ran into the parents of the girl she killed. And of course, the parents taking her under their wing have no idea that Catherine killed Rose, but they specifically mention that their daughter had been beheaded, just as we saw Catherine do as well. Rose's parents return to the site each year in remembrance of their daughter, and it's here that they reveal that the murder happened nine years ago tomorrow. This lets us know when all these scenes take place in relation to the other story, but this detail also means to me that Catherine must be heading back specifically on the anniversary of her possession. Catherine, again, thinking encountering Rose's parents is a sign, kills them both brutally. Interestingly, Cat throws up after killing them, as at this point she is doing this all on her own and without the evil controlling her. So she had to kill them on her own, and we see she has a reaction to the reality of what she's done. But it's too late to turn back now, and Cat takes their heads as a sort of continuation of the same ritual she started nine years ago. She finally makes it back to Bramford, which we see is now abandoned, surrounded by fences with the doors and windows boarded up. It must be that after the events nine years ago, at the very least, the murders of Rose and the two sisters led to the school being permanently shut down. Cat makes her way into the school, heading down to the same furnace in the basement as she had before. But now the furnace is cold and there are no embers burning. The movie cuts between this scene with the demon being exercised from the younger Catherine, and this shows us the spirit leaving Catherine via the father's exorcism. So from this point in the past, the evil has indeed left this place for good, as indicated by the cold furnace. Catherine is devastated as she only wanted the demon to be part of her again. She heads out into the empty streets outside of the school and cries, realizing that after everything she has done and been through, she is now completely alone. Much of Catherine's initial issues stemmed from the death of her parents and her inability to accept the reality of this tragic event. In the beginning, she is haunted by a dream featuring her parents and a charred car. It seems clear that Cat's parents are dead, as she later says so herself, but by then she is well under the evil's influence. But before this, she seems to believe that her parents are still alive, and attempts to call her father at one point. Also, when Satan first calls, she thinks that it's possibly her parents contacting her. All of this points to Catherine not accepting the reality of her parents' deaths, unwilling to consider the idea that she is alone. It seems that her faith isn't helping her deal with things either, and it's not until evil reaches out to her that she finds something that makes her feel whole again. That's why when the spirit leaves her, she doesn't want it to go. As with it as a part of her, she finally felt some kind of comfort after the death of her parents. And after it is exercised from her, she feels empty and lost, and continues to hopefully track down the spirit once more. But in the end, the spirit is gone, her parents are dead, and Catherine is left totally alone without any chance of getting the one thing that could replace her parents, a friend in evil. <laughs> All right, guys, that'll do it for my ending explained for the Black Coat's daughter. What did you guys think about the movie and its ending? And if you have any other requests for movies or TV shows you want me to explain, let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow for more ending explains and other horror videos. Thanks for watching Found Flicks. See you next time.